She's uh, slowly getting better. She had a rough week. Can't sleep much. Really sore in here. could bring her husband ribeyes about twice a week. Yeah. <laughs> you got any, you got any ribeyes? <laughs> we do. Medium. Uh, we're fine. She's better today for sure than she was yesterday. She had some down days during the week. How about you? I'm doing better. Just are they through messing with this, or they got it? I, I went to the prosthetic uh, Friday, and he wants to wait a, two or three more weeks for he puts me back, something else. Puts me back in a, a carbon fiber one. I'm still in the plastic temporary one right now. But he wants to wait a couple more weeks. He thinks I can go back to the old one. I think he has another big cover. Go ahead. Has that got anything to do with... I don't know. <laughs> That's a possibility. Every time they come in to do a test, they don't say, how would you like this test? Right. They say, doctor wants you to do this. Right. Yeah. And it's all the tests that the, the, the insurance will pay for, but they know, already know the results too anyway. Yeah. The insurance won't pay for it. <laughs> then they, then when they run out of all those, then they give you the test that you really need, that you need to find out. It's a racket, isn't it? Yep. It's a racket. You kids are moving around. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stay on one spot. You have to go up there and pick up the offering. You're going to hand us the offering place. Gonna... Oh, are you the acolytes? Yeah. You have to be close. Okay. You don't want to have to trace or... You don't want to do the steps? She's a little better, a little better. Uh, she had some rough, slow days, and then the weekend's been a little better. She slept better. She hadn't been sleeping. This is all really sore. Before they went in? Yeah, plus she had a mesh in there from a previous surgery, and they kind of messed around with it and got it to hurting. And then she had a whatever that crazy thing is called. She had that. And it's supposed to heal itself. So I shouldn't have to pay for that, right? <laughs> How are y'all? You all moving back? No, this is your pew, right? How's your brain doing? She's some better. Slow, long week, but she kind of felt a little better this morning. Slept better last night. She's still a little lax on cleaning and uh, laundry and stuff. You want to tell her? You okay? You remember this lady? She's been out running around. She, she's been all the way to Minden. <laughs> this thing's all lopsided, isn't it? Look how people sit in here. <clears throat> this is a funny seating arrangement. Isn't it? What time is it? It's time enough for me to make it in the door. She's cold. She had frost at her house. I know it. He always is. The Good late, the late Reverend oh, well, Jim. The Macon United Methodist Church. Um, uh, pastor will be with us shortly. Um, Take the grip uh, sure and the club head back. Willie together. the waver, the greeter back here. He's um, he's yeah. holding the door for him. And I'm giving uh, I'm giving a golf tip to Judy. Okay. Well. I've always wanted to see her play golf. I just, you know, it's someone a, that just it's quite a watch sight. that ball go and watch know. this, Roger. <laughs> Did Johnny Carson used to do something like that? Uh, he was before my time. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Don't you just like sparring with him a little bit? <laughs> well, welcome again. Now let me see announcements. Rhonda Lindsley's not here to get me straight, but I think next Sunday's a unity service at 10 o'clock. Saturday before that is as a serving day, serving team, whatever they want to call it. It's on the back of your bulletin. Serving Saturday. serving Saturday. And there was a third one that's in there. Kites. Kites, kites, kites. Aren't you glad we didn't fly kites yesterday? <laughs> Woo, had plenty of wind. It's just uh, never seen a heated kite before. All right. Um, our call to worship, if you'll stand and join me, we'll be in. This was the assertion of Jesus, which he made while he was with his disciples. Everything written about him in the Old Testament must be fulfilled. Then he opened the minds of his disciples to understand the scriptures as well as their own role in God's plans. May, May God, God in Christ open our minds as well and give, and give us, us understanding of both the scriptures and ourselves. And now you can join me, 601, if you'd like to use a hymn book. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And uh, we're pretty dark, so we better sing that twice, haven't we? It's got two <laughs> verses anyway. Good. of Christ be with you. God is good all the time. As we look at our list of joys and concerns, we'll take those thoughts to the Lord in prayer. We can add to our list. We can amend our list. So what say you? Is that, is that bad English, Rhonda? I heard that somewhere. What say you? Angie's got a big smile on her face. You can't always see that when she's facing away from you. Happy for you. Thanks be to God. That's the best time to have surgery when you're about four months old, right? <laughs> After that, it's downhill. Lucy, you want to know, and you've all asked me, is uh, minimally better? She had a rough week, which some of the days went backwards, but uh, the weekend has been better. She's got more rest. And she's getting a little bossy. Uh, is that a sign? Yeah, okay. 
not eating the best, uh, but doing better at all those things. Wanted to be here, but probably not good or able to be. I tell her you missed her, and we'll shoot for next Sunday, okay? Yeah. All right. Bob is still recovering from his major surgery. Betty's still having therapy. Sarah recovering from her surgery. So you kind of know the deals here. Uh, Randy's still in between what's coming is going to be really good and kind of a little bit better now, right? <laughs> He's going from plastic to what? Carbon fiber coming up. Okay. That sounds like something Elon Musk is involved in. Is that right? No. How could you blow up this trillion dollar rocket and call it a success? <laughs> I guess you have a lot of money when you do that, huh? Okay, anything else? Thanks for your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we'll bring these to the altar table and pray today. I'll pray with you and we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Thank you, God, for another Sunday, for another week, for another way to be in your presence in this place. We have a list of concerns as well as that which brings us joy today, and we bring all to your attention and to your altar, and we, we come as a grateful and thankful people, wanting to worship and wanting to fellowship and wanting to learn and wanting to live the way you want us to. So we ask you for your attentiveness. We know that you'll be a God who honors our prayers. We thank you for the risen Christ in the Easter time, and we bring our list to ask for your continued care. We thank you that Lucy is healing and improving. Thank you that Bob is also, and Betty. Thank you for the good news from little Tucker, from, for Angie and that family, for Sarah's continued recovery. I just ask you for care on our whole list and other needs and names that may come to us later on. We pray that the week and this day can be all that you want it to be for us and that we can be all that you want us to be for you. We thank you for the Christ, his victory over death and the grave, and his ability to offer salvation to us through his grace to be received by our faith. We remember him when we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying to pray like this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. your turn, but you know, if you look across from page 601 to 600, that looked pretty enticing to me. So how about we'll start with 600? Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life, let me more of them you of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, Christ the blessed one gives to all, wonderful words of life. Sinner, 
469. Is that in the Cokesbury one? Just having fun with you. Just having fun.
before you put that away, we had a uh, 657 request that just won't take very long to work in there. 
silently. Word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> I gotta find my coffee before I strangle myself. Lucy's hospital stay involved test after test after the ambulance ride and the Samaritan hospital time. EKGs, scans, IVs, you kind of know the routine. Then the cardiac cath and its related issues like major pain, but also located the possible cause of the heart pain. After more scans and an ultrasound and more IVs and a doctor consultation, then a final test to determine if it's surgery or home. Thankfully, it turned out to be home. As you folks will remember, I was major upset and anxious last Sunday, worried about my sweet Lucy, and thanks to all who worried with me and prayed for her. It was comforting to learn after I got to the hospital that Lucy was doing pretty good. The heart pain had subsided, the tests were good, but they wanted to, to monitor her overnight, which became Monday afternoon after three by discharge time. Then home by five. Now I know the name of this thing that caused all the trouble. Let me see what it was. It's a bundle branch block. Ever hear of such? Triple Bs. It's disruption to the electrical impulse that contracts the heart lower chambers. Now you know that. Lucy was born with that. And it has never given trouble until last Sunday. After these 88 years, I mean 78 years. So, we were glad to learn about that, and we were glad to inform the doctors and technicians that she had that. She has known that uh, for many, many years. And they were glad to know about that and to pursue that a little bit further. And then they announced to us that the bundle branch block was very likely going to heal itself. And I wondered if that would come off the bill. Really going to heal itself? So what's the question? It just leaves one. How much is the bill now? Will our insurance cover it? Probably three or four of Lucy's Social Security checks, maybe. Or uh, could we do a rummage sale fundraiser? We could. Maybe a loan from Chad. That would be that would be good leadership, wouldn't it? Leadership committee, yeah. And also that would be a conservation act. Yeah. Or I could extend my stay with you and we could call Marsha and say, hold on for a while. But our motorhome wouldn't like that. Or Lucy could get a job. <laughs> Any and all suggestions will be appreciated. Thanks again for your concern, assistance, and prayers. Uh, the bottom line is, whatever the cost, Lucy is worth it. Amen. <laughs> so, what's that got to do with rendering to God? I'm not sure, but there are some parallels and some connections. I'm not even sure we know that word or use that word, do we? Sometimes maybe farmers use that word, rendering Lord. You ever heard of that? Don't do that anymore, do we? It does? Okay. Well, this is about a Lord that still exists and rendering to the Lord, okay? Or rendering to our Lord that which is his. 
It, it was confusing in the New Testament times what to give to Caesar and what to give to someone else, as if there couldn't be more than one gift. And they certainly thought they had Jesus tricked when they asked this question. And he simply said, Render to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to God that which is God's. I think we remember the render to Caesar's part, especially this tax time of year, and we still participate in such programs and are thankful for our civic responsibilities and our ability to meet them in all the things they do with our money. To render, it's an old word, obviously. It means um, like making a payment, uh, settling an account, submitting something for consideration or approval. So to render, we identify what belongs to God and give it to God, pay it to God, offer it to God. Well, what might that look like, and how have we been doing that, or doing at that? I suspect there's still a balance that most of us owe, and that we're talking about an ongoing payment plan. Perhaps a look at the gifts that God has given us, and what we have done or are doing with them will help us. A way of rendering to God would be to identify the gifts, and uh, own them, and develop them, and distribute them, use them in service. Ephesians 4 would be a good starting place. There are several chapters in the New Testament, and we've listed them in the bulletin, that, that identify some gifts. You probably are familiar with these, are you not? Uh, 4.14, his gifts were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, the purpose of which is to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. So, starting place, no doubt, is Ephesians 4, and we could review that list. It's kind of a high-profile list, and you could easily say, none of those apply to me. I'm not an apostle or a prophet. Uh, these gifts often involve a calling, uh, a sense of God's uh, desire for you to do one or more of these things. Apostles are, are the disciples that ended up being sent out on missions and uh, in ministry. Disciples, disciple means to follow. So at some point, that transition from following to being sent out. And they became apostles. And that's still an appropriate concept. And it might be that we could be apostles in some kind of a lesser legal official way, but nonetheless, persons who are sent in the name of God, for God, to serve God, and to share God's love and knowledge and gospel. Prophets is even a little more scary in that we think we reserve that to biblical prophets, persons who could foretell the future, or at least on, in some areas. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It means a spokesperson for God. If a prophet is one who speaks for God, and God helps the prophet with that speech and with that choice. So it's foretelling, not necessarily, but foretelling pretty likely. You say the words that you know, that you've learned about God to others who are eager to learn. Evangelist, most of us would know that word, but we also could easily say that belongs to somebody else and not to me. That too is kind of a calling. Persons who are committed and called to share the gospel in convincing and life-changing ways. 
So it's hard to own some of these gifts, and it's easy to dismiss them, isn't it? Pastors, of course, we can have a whole different track for them, and especially in our conference system. It's organized and official, and people have to recognize your calling, um, certify, and educate, and train. It's a long process, the way we do it. Uh, requiring college and seminary if you're to become an elder. And most uh, pastors in our conference who have appointments of this size and similar are indeed elders. There are different levels. You could be a deacon and serve other size appointments. Or you can even be a pastor as a layperson, and certainly we need those people and have several of those. Persons who are sent to the local churches to share their spiritual gifts and preach and teach the Word of God. Uh, it's the higher level, uh, elder level, they're authorized to administer the sacraments and uh, keep order in the local church. They're trainers and equippers and uh, important folks in our church structure. But you might easy, easily and readily say, not for me, but yet you know people that find out that is for them and they pursue that. Somebody like Karen from this church uh, is doing that kind of ministry and, and other kinds of ministry. But you might yet be thinking, not me, I'm not uh, any of those things. Well, we'll look at another place then. In Romans chapter 12, there's another list. Maybe that'll be more appealing to you. Have you ever looked at these lists? Uh, Twelve six having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. These Gifts come th to us from God's grace. It's not that we earn or deserve or figure it all out by ourselves. If service in our serving, he who teaches in his teaching, he who exhorts in his exhortations, and he who contributes in liberality, and he who gives aid with zeal, and he who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So a little different uh, list and a little different feeling about some of those things, perhaps. Uh, I don't even know if we thought of things like that as gifts, like giving and acts of mercy. Service, we might have thought of that. Uh, in a rural church, a uh, seminary church for me, 70 miles from the seminary campus, uh, I tried to tell this little church what I was learning during the week that they should know on Sunday. And that didn't go overly well, but at least we didn't get in any major fights. This church had, uh, like, does this floor slope toward the front a little bit or not? This looks like it, huh? A lot of sanctuaries, uh, the floor slopes, and the back seats are higher than the front. I guess that's so maybe you could see better. It's kind of a theater style, and this country church I'm talking about was like that. But they didn't figure out how to angle the bottom of the pews so they could compensate for that slope. And so the backs not only were straight, they were kind of leaning forward. And they weren't as tall as these, so they didn't come at a real comfortable place in your back, and they were trying to throw you out. And they had no cushions. So in a concern meeting one night, we thought, we need some new pews in this church. Pews with cushions and pews with higher backs and pews that are more comfortable and all of those arguments. And um, guess what? Guess what the first question was? 
How much is that going to be, preacher? Well, more than you would like to know, probably. It turned out we had a pew salesman come with a sample pew about three feet long. And different people tried it out. Okay, what's the deal? Each pew would be $200. And this is in the 1970s. Maybe that doesn't sound like a lot today, and it would certainly be more today, wouldn't it? $200, and there were like 18 pews. Well, how are we going to do that? We didn't have that kind of money. So one of the church leaders said, I'll buy a pew. If everyone else would, we could do that. And no one else said that. So as uh, we just tabled that, think about it, pray about it, and as the week and weeks went on, uh, once in a while someone would call or come by and say, Preacher, I'll buy a pew, or our family will buy a pew, or Joe and I together are going to buy a pew, okay? So we did pretty good, but we didn't have 18 yet. And one day, a farmer man that I knew very well, and he was very active in the church, came to the parsonage door and said, Preacher, I want to buy a pew. I said, Wilbur, I really appreciate that, and the church will. Can you afford that? He said, I just sold 20 hogs, <laughs> and here's the $200, 10 $20 bills. That was impressive to me and sacrificial to him. Maybe a gift from God, uh, maybe just that one act. He didn't do that all the time, but the point is there are things that God wants us to do from time to time and enables us to do that. And in so doing, we render to God. We give to God by giving to the church, uh, sometimes by giving to others. So possibly you have a gift that you've never heard of. And maybe you'd want to consider such a list if uh, any of that even comes close to something that sounds like you could fit into service. We talk about service a lot. We even have a serving team, don't we? So in so serving, you can render to God. Teaching has already been mentioned, hadn't it? But teaching at various levels. It doesn't have to be a pastor teacher. It can be Sunday school class at any of those levels. Certainly some wonderful servants have served as Sunday school teachers across the years, some with little people and some with larger people. Um, exhortation, have you ever thought of that as being a spiritual gift? And, and if you had that gift or that desire or would be willing to explore that, um, then you would exhort people that's a little different than encouraging, but it's similar in that you're going to push at people a little bit in a very comfortable, caring way to help them find their gifts and employ their gifts and to be the people that God wants them to be. Contribution, we might want to shy away from that one, huh? That's just simply uh, giving. It wouldn't have to be just money. There are lots of different ways to give, as my pig farmer demonstrated. He who contributes, if that is your gift, and if you're claiming that gift, and you're rendering to God with that gift, then you should do it liberally, generously. Maybe a little more so than your neighbor who isn't claiming that gift, but another gift. Giving aid, how many different uh, things could that encompass? And if that is a gift that you would think God might have 
helped you to understand that you'd like to give aid in the name of God as a gift back to God, but you have to find some human beings in that process somewhere. And you should do that with zeal, with uh, enthusiasm, with uh, excitement and energy. You don't begrudgingly say, I got this gift of aid, I want to aid you with this, now here you go. It's a little different attitude than that. And you know people that do that and have that. Or acts of mercy, a little different than aid perhaps. Somehow you're going to be merciful to other folks. And if you do that, then you're supposed to do that with cheerfulness. Cheerfully help other people by sharing mercy with them and in so doing, render to God that which is God. Now there are other places in the New Testament that suggest certain gifts. So there's a lot of lists. You're bound to find your gift on the one of those lists, wouldn't you think? No? First uh, Corinthians 12. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To, one's, to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, Maybe that's you. To another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. Now this is in the Corinthian church. is a little different than some of the other churches uh, in the spiritual sense. They talked about spiritual gifts a little more. <clears throat> to another prophecy, we've heard that before. To another the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another various kinds of tongues, this is the Corinthian church where that eventually became a problem. <clears throat> and to another the interpretation of tongues. Uh, uh, lots of cases, uh, people think they have this gift of tongues, but when uh, they share that, nobody knows what they're saying. So, according to this scripture, somebody should be able to interpret that so it could be understood. So that's a gift, to be able to interpret. Some of those are not quite the way we live out our church life, are they? But maybe some are. Uh, certainly this thought of wisdom, who would not want to be wise before God and render to God uh, out of that understanding of wisdom. Biblical wisdom means knowing what God declares is right and wrong. It's not a whole bunch of uh, theology or great information. It's just knowing uh, what God thinks is right and what God thinks is wrong. <clears throat> and then you make the proper choices. So knowledge fits into that. Knowledge might be the knowing of that and wisdom, the use of that knowledge. And then they say faith is a gift. Did you ever realize that? Uh, some people you've noticed have seem to have more faith than the rest of us. Maybe that's their gift. Uh, God gave them an abundance of faith so they could um, <clears throat> render back to God with their faith <clears throat> and be helpful to others and to the church. That's uh, several lists for you to think about. Uh, study all week and report back next Sunday. It'll be a fifth Sunday, won't it? Next Sunday. Unity service. So you'll have a larger audience to report to, to <clears throat> announce your gift to. Now here's some problems with those lists, if you haven't figured that out yet. Where's music at? Where's singing at? Where's playing the organ at and all of that? It seems noticeably missing to me. And we all agree that music can be a special gift and we all appreciate and enjoy that and and it's one that enhances our worship and our service. So we thank the musicians and 
consider that to be a gift, don't we? Well, if you ever hear a person who doesn't have the gift try to play the organ, you'll appreciate those who do. <laughs> or sing, you know, I, I tell them to turn my mic down <laughs> when we're singing. Uh, administrative people, uh, people who work in the office like Ivy, uh, people that do children's ministry like Rhonda, uh, those indeed can be gifts, I think, and people are called to do those things and equipped to do those things by God and appreciated for doing those things by the church. So I'm suggesting uh, this is a representative list not necessarily an exhaustive list. Uh, all these centuries later, there's surely some additional things. All this technology stuff, they didn't know about that in the first century. Uh, so we know about people who are gifted to do that, and we appreciate that, and, and that's a special way of serving the church, isn't it? Your new pastor's husband is seems to have that gift, doesn't he? Or he gifts, maybe, with technology and might be wonderfully helpful to you. So all these are inspired by God and <clears throat> acceptable gifts to think about how it is that you might render to God. Uh, Fourteen of those I just listed. Uh, reckon you could find something in that list or in those lists. Uh, that's kind of compatible with what you think you're able to do and have been doing for the church and for God. Uh, having checked the list again, pray through the list again, uh, you might then check with someone else. You know, other people can determine or distinguish or identify gifts in you that sometimes you may not be able to. Um, other people can notice that you have a special ability to do something that maybe you don't realize or haven't recognized. <clears throat> and so checking with some other people that you would have confidence in uh, might help you uh, identify and uh, develop such a gift. Virtually every time someone says to me, and that's fairly often, <clears throat> when we have this discussion, I don't think I have any gifts. You ever heard that? <clears throat> you ever said that? Yeah, some of you have. And it's usually someone who is pretty gifted that says that. that they somehow don't realize their gifts. They just do it, do them in a kind of a routine way. Every time someone says that, there's also someone that says, oh, yes, you do. And they might help you identify one or two. And then you can check blessings or check the blessing list of anything that you do that brings a blessing to you, that feels right about what you're doing, like you uh, indeed are equipped to do that and comfortable doing that. And it just works for you, and there's some results. People appreciate it, and God honors it. Uh, sometimes if you just think about uh, what would really make me feel good about doing in and through the church, being blessed by the results of using your gifts, a confirmation that you have these gifts and are using them, it could be a gift to recognize and identify gifts of others. You, know, you might be the one that helps someone else recognize their gift. And that's kind of like the gift of encouragement. So back to the original verse and the topic of rendering or paying. Can we, with one or more of these gifts, continue or start to give service to God? Jesus said, whose image is on the coin? And they said, Caesar's. Well then, Jesus said, render to Caesar that which is Caesar's. Jesus isn't ready to start some revolution against Rome 
although he's not too proud of Rome and a lot of things they do, he's doing his ministry in a different arena. Let Caesar have what should be his and let the Roman government be who they are. But you know why? You have the image of God in you. And if the image of God is a part of who you are, then you should render to God that which is God's. Any kind of service or acts of love or compassion uh, somewhat similar to what we heard listed here could be a way that that happens. As in the book of Revelation, we're learning that there's a representative list of contemporary historical churches, first century churches, some with issues and some that are doing fairly well. Uh, representative, not to say that those are only seven churches that are churches in the first century, or that they uh, would be like any other church in any other century. It's just representative. You can find churches uh, that will have these kinds of things going on. In fact, we're looking for the Macon Church in this list, and uh, I don't know if we've found that yet, but we might, huh? At least could be one thing, the Church of Ephesus, and one thing, Church of Laodicea. Yeah, that's kind of who we are and what we've been doing. So, would you consider rethinking what your gift might be and how it is that you might Render to God with that gift through service in this church or some activity. In according, with, according to God's word, you do have a gift. You can't get away with saying you don't. Uh, Peter says, each has received a gift. So employ it for one another as good stewards of God's sacred grace. So when you say you don't have a gift, you're arguing with scripture that says you do have. So it's, it's a matter of getting on with identifying that and developing that and rendering that to God. And many of you have been doing that for years and you to be uh, celebrated and we're thankful for you. When you review God's list of gifts, check with others. You think, really think I could do this? Sure. What it is that blesses you and others, that's a clue if, if you're doing something for God and God is honoring that, then you're on target. And you're ready to prayerfully offer back to God in service through his church whatever that would be. For those of you who figured this out long ago and are being blessed by your rendering to God, that which is God's, thanks. Thanks for sharing God's spiritual gifts with this good church. We got a new slogan for our church. Did you notice that? It's in the bulletin. See if you can find it. Any ideas? How about that? Is that good? We love our church, and you will too. So that's going on the digital sign, and that'll be on a megaphone all around town. Whoever has that gift and that car can do that. <laughs> So, in accordance with God's word, you have a gift, everyone does. And our church has the opportunity to share those gifts, not only inside the church, but in the community. 
when you ref- review God's list and check with others and remember what it is that blesses you and others, you're ready to prayerfully offer them back to God in service through his church. For the blessings we are receiving and about to receive, we give thanks to our awesome God. Amen. Glory to God. Let it be to us according to God's will and word. Thank you, God, for this church and for these persons that populate this church and have for a long time or maybe are newer or maybe will be coming in the future. Thank you for gifting us with abilities to strengthen and grow your church and to help one another be the persons that you want each of us to be. We pray your presence in a fresh and new way as we think about our church's personality and think about how we can make it all that you want it to be. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. We have a hymn to sing as you think through some of those thoughts and encourage you to do that during the week before us. Which is it? <laughs> Thanks to our new ushers. Are you on for other Sundays or is it a one Sunday deal or what? Oh, I'm not. Rotating. I got that. Wait a minute, I'm busy. (laughs) Okay, may the grace of Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, always. Thank you, sir.